That's my bad, sorry. Turn the switch on, he says. Thank you, Brendan. Good tip. That was way better. You can hear me now. My name is Dan Rosewell, and I'm, uh, I play uh, also in this uh, wonderful sax section here. And uh, I, it's my job to introduce a tune which I actually arranged um, 40 years ago in 1983 when I was a, uh, a student at St. Effects music department in the uh, second year of uh, my degree in jazz arranging and composition, so it's a great pleasure to, uh, it was like buried for 39.5 years, and so to bring it back a half a year ago and, and hear it again with my friends in this big band has been awesome. It's a song called, <coughs> it's a song called But Not For Me, written by one of my favorite composers, George Gershwin, who wrote so many beautiful uh, uh, works in both jazz and kind of crossover into classical as well. Uh, this but not for me was written for a musical in 1930 called Girl Crazy. And I have to admit, back <clears throat> when I was 20, I had not yet a, I was, I was dearly looking for somebody to partner with, to put it that way. <laughs> and I was a lonely sod and hadn't figured out how to date yet, so this was kind of my uh, ode to uh, the writing songs of love, but not for me. Thank you. 
I'm Jacob. I'm in the trombone section, which is the second row of the big band. Um, this next tune, Persevere, was written by American arranger, composer, veteran, pianist, uh, Frank Van Tooth, who in the late 80s, uh, after a stint of living in Austria and returning back to the States, uh, started writing and recording a bunch of music. Uh, and this next tune is the title track off of his 1990 album, Persevere. Uh, and it's this really cool, wild, fusion-y thing um, that takes elements of jazz, rock, funk, and probably some other things, uh, and just creates this crazy thing to listen to. Uh, it's a lot of fun, covers a lot of stuff. It's gonna open up with this really cool, grungy uh, guitar solo from Perry Williams before uh, his little duet with Isaac Mazur on trumpet, and then Isaac's gonna blow a cooking solo uh, partway through. This is personal.
everybody. My name is Richard. I'm one of the other trombone players. And we discovered that whichever way you count, the trombone row is the second row of the band. film and TV, uh, very active, many awards, many accolades. Uh, born in the 50s, he died about a decade ago. Um, lots of children's music that he wrote. Uh, and in 2007, he won the SOCAN Award for Children's uh, Music for my favorite children's show, The Doodle Box. <laughs> Check it out, it's amazing. Uh, in this Tune. We're going to feature uh, Sean White and Dan Rosewell soloing on Glidin' in Stride.
I'm Mark and I have some dubs over there. Got the switch. I'm Isaac. I'm from the trumpet section. Can you guess the role that we're in? <laughs> Not the second row. <laughs> I'm going to test your memories. I'm going to give you some lyrics. I'm going to see if anybody knows the song. You say that it's over, baby. You say that it's over now. But you're still hanging around with me. Come on. Move over. Won't you move over? Yeah. What was that? Move over. Awesome. There we go. <laughs> By, of course, Janis Joplin. This happened to be coming from her best-selling album, which happened to be released after she passed away. Uh, it was released in 1971. Um, it was caught in the shadows of other hits, such as Me and Bobby McGee and Mercedes, Mercedes Benz, and it happens to be the only song on this album exclusively, exclusively written by Jan Strappa, oddly enough. Uh, it was later arranged by someone named Keith, Mans Keith Mansfield, uh, who is also known as a producer and an arranger who happened to write the tune of Grandstand for the BBC. And Maynard Ferguson wrote this, uh, excuse me, played this on his creatively named album of Maynard Ferguson. Um, known for his ability to play multiple instruments and playing in jazz terms of the stratosphere, tonight we have brought it down for us human trumpet players be able to play it tonight. Um, it's going to feature the stylistic songs of Jacob in the drum mom section. Nathan, excuse me. Being a te music teacher, I still struggle with names every single day. Nathan on tenor. And back to the drum mom section, we have Steve Gibbons. Enjoy tonight. Enjoy tonight's song. <laughs> Thank you. 
it's my turn. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna do, we're gonna do one more tune and then take a little five minute uh, where did my face go kind of break, uh, and, and we'll be back. It won't be a long break. It'll be a, just a good break. Uh, the next tune, though, is um, a standard by a guy uh, named Tad, with two D's, Tad Dameron, uh, who was uh, uh, 1917 to 1965. Uh, he died uh, practically very young. Uh, he was one of the favorite composers of a whole bunch of people in, in the bebop era. Uh, he was um, considered to be kind of the romanticist of the uh, bebop composers. Um, and uh, he, among his many other uh, accomplishments, like he was, he played with everybody, recorded with everybody, uh, and, uh, and was a really good uh, player himself. Um, but he invented a, a way of getting around a really tired old turnaround. Like a turnaround is the way you end a phrase. You've got eight, eight bars of music, and at the end of the eight bars, you have to figure out a way to get around it. If you get to the next eight bars, then there's a, there's a formula that's been used since the, before the Baroque. Uh, and, and he took that formula and just kind of shifted things a little bit. So instead of um, going uh, uh, up a fourth, it went up like a minor third. And instead of going down a fifth, it went down a minor third and so on. And, it, and people heard it and it, it realized what it was doing. It was doing exactly the same thing as the old turnaround did, but it just sounded so fresh. And, everybody starts playing it. And now it's standard. You hear it all over the place, and you'll hear it at the end of just about every eight-bar section in this tune as well, the Tad Dameron turnaround. Anyway, uh, he's also famous for doing this tune. It's the Lady Bird. Lady Bird. And it's uh, going to feature uh, Steve and Dan on the solo. So I hope you enjoy it. And then uh, feel free to talk amongst yourselves once the tune is over, or even before, just be, because you won't, be able to, you won't be able to hear yourself anyway. Uh, it's kind of a rocker.
Hello, my name is Sean. I am uh, in the now the highest row uh, the front of the section. Uh, as uh, Nathan just said, uh, excuse me, last term, we are really uh, big fans of Sammy Nestico and uh, his tunes for Count Basie. Um, and this next one's um, another one here. Uh, to explain this, I thought I'd. Uh, uh, I didn't go to UPEI here, even though I'm from the island. I went away to jazz school, and I learned a lot of jazz lingo. Um, probably the most important thing I got from my degree in jazz performance. <laughs> um, and uh, I thought I'd just kind of teach a little bit of jazz lingo. So this tune took a lot of time in the woodshed, uh, or we had to shed a lot in the trumpet section. It is a, a bit of a, a, a barn burner, not a hay burner. Um, and uh, I hope it's not out to lunch, which means that it's kind of, you know, it's out to lunch. <laughs> and then, uh, and finally, uh, we have a, a, a cooking solo um, from Peter on tenor uh, in this tune. Uh, this is uh, called The Heat's On.
introduce an old hymn of goodie, one of the jazz standards. Um, three big jazz composer arrangers involved in this one. Certainly Basie, who was an organist, piano player, composer, band leader. Um, the author of this, uh, Frank Foster, played flute and soprano sax. And he came out of the war in 53 and joined um, the Basie band and stayed there for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, after Basie died, 50 years later, uh, Thad Jones took over. And once Thad Jones uh, went back to Copenhagen, Frank Foster took over the band once more. So, shiny stock. Um, according to the, the lyrics that Ella Fitzgerald sang to this, it's because she liked the effect shiny stockings had on the male population. <laughs> so we give you um, shiny stockings from 1955. And tonight, um, according to this, Isaac Mazur and Perry and Leo are going to be uh, performing for you. Uh, this particular song was written and Basie himself uh, really liked it. He said it, it starts off calmly, softly. It builds with lots of sectional playing in the middle, and it ends with an explosion. So, not quite the explosion of a few years later, it heats on, but explosion nonetheless. Thanks, Doug.
this next tune we're going to play is actually a little bit older than the one we just played. You may know it uh, from uh, Louis Armstrong, who uh, kind of made it famous kind of when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. And it's kind of a upbeat swing number. And uh, yeah, hope you like it. Uh, I'm going to be featured in this one on tenor, so there you go.
final tune of the evening. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, it, had, it had to happen. Uh, like, e like April, it had to happen. Um, uh, thank you all so much for, for being here and for being such an appreciative audience. Uh, and uh, thank you to the band for being such a tremendous bunch of musicians. The final tune we're going to do is a, is a theme song from a very popular TV show uh, that I was fortunate enough to watch kind of live, uh, I Love Lucy. And uh, yeah, Ricky and the, and the gang, Ethel. Um, <coughs> uh, and it, it's, uh, it's got some really interesting sections. There's like a quartet that occurs at the end. Uh, and uh, uh, there are, um, it's, it's a, a Latin tune, which is a bit of a change from what you've been hearing. This was sort of the medium swing set, <laughs> where everything was at about 132 to four the notes equal 132. Uh, but this is a little bit upbeat and Latin, and it's going to feature Peter again on tenor and Jacob back on the trombone. And uh, Mike gets a lot of a lot of fills going on, and uh, and then just this in incredible band uh, does a lot of ensemble work that I think you'll really enjoy. So once again, thank you for coming to hear us. And uh, we do have a, a Facebook page that's fairly active and a website. So uh, you know, check that out for hopefully some dates before everybody disappears to the four winds of July and August. We'll try and fit in another concert somewhere somehow. Right, I love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs>